Watch you guys got another video here for you on how to install Windows XP mode on Windows 10 machine. Now this was originally designed for Windows 7 machines, but it is possible to get it to run on a Windows 10 machine using VMware and a couple of little modifications. So let's take a look at how we can go ahead and do that. So first head over to the Microsoft website here and download the Windows XP mode. Uh, these two versions here, you don't need both of them. Just click the top one here and put the tick in the box and basically all you need to do here next is click on the next button and this will download uh, the executable file that we need now this won't run on a windows 10 machine you will need to extract those so you're going to need a piece of software and we're going to be using 7-zip to extract those files from there because that's where uh, the vhd file is in there which is the windows xp image which we're going to use so you can download this for free I'll leave the link in the video description for you. It's a great piece of software and it is free. I've been using it for many, many years and uh, it's a must have bit of software for every user. So download the 64 bit version if you're on a 64 bit machine. And uh, once we've got that downloaded, you can use a VMware player. I'm going to be using VMware Workstation, but you can also use uh, VirtualBox to do this as well. So you should see the executable file in location where you downloaded it to. We will need to right click and use 7-zip, then open archive, and then cab. So it has to be that location there. That's what we need to do. So you will need to install 7-zip. It's very straightforward and easy to do. You should now see two executable files and a folder called sources. Click on the sources folder here. And once you click on the sources folder, there'll be a file inside here called XMP. We can now double click on the XMP file. And this will take us uh, deeper into this compressed file here. You can see there is a bunch of files in here. The one that's interesting to us is the virtual XP VHD file. But I'm going to select all of these files and copy them. But the main file that you need is the virtual XP VHD file because that is the image that we're going to be using. So I'm just going to copy and extract all of these here, just like so. And I'm going to copy them straight to the folder where I had that executable file stored, which is called XP mode folder. So I'm going to OK this and this will extract all of those files into that folder for me. So let's go to the location where we extracted these and we can then take a look at the files inside. So there we have our files, and this is the file here that we don't need anymore because that is the executable file. We just need all of these files here. Well, we just need one of these files, but we're gonna now remove the Windows XP mode executable. Just right click and delete that. We don't need that anymore. And what we need to do here is change the extension on the virtual XP VHD file. Now you can see the extensions here by going to options, uh, view options and folder options and literally inside here view and you can see hide extensions for known file types. I just take the tick out of that. I don't know why Windows seems to put that in there by default. But once you've done that, right click on this here and go to rename and just put a dot inside there like so. And once you do that, this will then change this to an image. You can see this will work on uh, VMware and also VirtualBox. So if VirtualBox is your weapon of choice, you can use that piece of software to uh, load up this uh, Windows XP VHD file. I'm going to be using uh, VMware Workstation. So go up to the top, go new virtual machine here. And once we've got this box open, we can now click on the next button. And put the radio button inside. I will install operating system later. The virtual machine will be created with a blank hard disk. Click next. And now we need to select our operating system, Microsoft Windows, and we're going to go for Windows XP Professional. Click on this one here, and we can go next once we've got that selected. Once you've got that done, you can give your virtual machine a name. I'm going to leave that as is. And now the location needs to be pointing to the files that we extracted. So go browse and go to your desktop. And I'm going to be putting this into the XP mode VHD file, as you can see here. Don't worry about the space and capacity because uh, disk capacity, because we've uh, going to be using the image that we already got here. So click on customize hardware 
and this will open up the customized hardware uh, window here and once we're inside here we can make some changes to our virtual machine Vir virtual machine memory you can give it whatever memory that you have available on your system if you've got a lot of memory you might be able to give it 8 gigs or 16 gigs personally 8 gigs is plenty for me because i've got 32 gigs available uh, the processors again i'm just going to do two and two here and again we can go over to our drive we don't need to worry about our cd-rom drive what's important here is our network adapter you need to disable this because you don't want to be connecting to the internet on a operating system that is not supported by Microsoft anymore because it will make you vulnerable to malware and other types of infections. Next, drop down to the USB controller. You can choose whatever you want here. I'm leaving that USB 2.0. And next up, we can leave all of this as default apart from the display area, whereas I'm going to give the graphics memory a one gigabyte um, availability there. And now we can click close and a click finish. And that is now done. So what we need to do next is go to power on here. You will see cannot connect to virtual device because no corresponding device is available on the host. Just click yes. And basically once you click yes, it will connect uh, to that device there. As you can see here, it's now starting to load up Windows XP. Now there is a little flaw in this method. It means that you won't have any sort of mouse control as of yet because we need to remove the virtual uh, tools that's built into this which it's trying to use but we don't want to use that we want to use the vmware tools and the same thing for virtualbox you want to use their uh, extension pack so you get full uh, movability with the mouse and everything else so what we're going to do is let this load up it does take a little bit of time so be patient and let that load and you will be using the tab key and also your arrow keys uh, and your enter key just to enter in a couple of simple commands here uh, so we can get to the desktop and i'll show you how to do all this in a second okay so you'll see here we can't use our mouse but if you use your tab key you'll be able to navigate down to i accept this agreement and make sure the radio button is in there and then you can push the enter key to click on next it's that simple so just do the navigation bit here, very simple and easy to do. So I don't want to exit the setup. I want to navigate. There we go. And uh, once I've got this done, I can push next. I'm not worried about all of the region. I can change all that later on. Give it a name. You can call it whatever you like. I'm just going to call this test and go next. And again, I'm not worried about all of the date and time and all that sort of stuff. We can change that at a later date. Push enter on your keyboard. You will get a black screen at some point don't worry about that just force close the uh, virtual machine and basically restart it and the same thing goes for uh, virtual box if you're getting this error popping up with a black screen just force close it and restart you should then see something like this push ok if you get into these boxes popping up saying found new hardware just push the escape key because you're not connected to the internet and uh, we haven't got any drivers for this sort of stuff so just exit out of this by pushing escape until you get to the place where you want to be which is the desktop so just exit out of these by just pushing escape here and you should see something like thank you you might need to restart a couple of times during that process so if you get a black screen don't panic just escape and restart it and then once we get this all working you won't have to worry about any of that sort of stuff so once we get to this stage we need to uh, remove the virtual uh, components from uh, windows xp so we can install uh, VMware tools and also if you're on VirtualBox be able to install the extension pack here so if you keep getting this popping up don't panic just push the Windows key and R and then type in here appwiz.cpl and push enter and you'll see the virtual PC integration components just navigate to that using your arrow keys and your tab key and push enter to remove make sure the tab key is navigated to the remove tab here like I'm showing you here and then push enter and then click yes with the enter key and then this will remove the virtual PC integration components you will need to restart again so navigate to yes and push enter once we've got this done we should be uh, be able to install VMware tools which will then resolve all of our problems and get the access to the 
mouse and all the other functions which you would expect on a normal PC. So let's restart the system one more time here and uh, push enter here for yes. And we now have Windows XP booting up here. Push enter to log on. And there we are, we're getting back to here now. So don't worry about that uh, hardware here. So what we need to do here is we need to put on our VMware tools here, or if you're on virtual uh, box, you will need to install the extension pack at this stage. Now it's not inside here. It should be inside my computer, but if you don't see it there on the CD-ROM drive, what you can do is go up to your VMware workstation or your VMware player, and you will then be able to enable this so you can click on uh, your CD-ROM drive and install it, okay? So it's not listed in here. So it's not selected as of yet. So I'm gonna go up to the top left-hand corner on my VMware workstation here. And there should be an area up here saying VM, update VMware tools. And you should now see it attach itself to the CD-ROM drive here. Double click on this and click next. And you can put complete here and go next again and install. So we've got this all going on the system now. And once this is all done, this should be okay to use the mouse as normal and we should get full functionality of our virtual machine. Click finish and we need to do one more quick restart here. I'm just gonna quickly do a quick restart. And once this is done, we will be up and running and be able to use this full screen. All the graphics should be working properly and everything should be functioning as is. So let that just do its thing and shut down. And again, if you get any sort of hangs during that installation process, just full shut down the PC and restart and it should get back to normal. So now we have a fully functional VMware workstation with Windows XP Professional. And let me know in the comments section below whether you managed to get yours activated uh, via the live activation or whether you had to use the phone call to get the activation on this because it should activate um, in theory because it's from Microsoft. So you can see the good old glory days of Windows XP working perfectly fine. Again, I am not connected to the internet at this stage. I wouldn't advise you to use this on the internet, but if you do want to play retro games or use this on, a, on some sort of a basis for offline work, you could do via this VM. Uh, where or via VirtualBox, it's entirely up to you. And if you feel confident enough and you're mad enough to put this on the internet, then by all means uh, do so, but use uh, with caution because it will be vulnerable to the elements because it hasn't got any sort of updates or security patches or any sort of uh, um, things like that done to it anymore because it's a completely end of support. So it's entirely up to you whether you enable the internet I wouldn't advise you to do any banking or anything like that on it. That would be a complete madness. But you can see here, perfectly functioning, perfectly fine. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it for this video. Thanks again for watching. Thank you for all the people that joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. And I shall see you again for another video real soon. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.